Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this little circular patterned um, bracelet. I haven't come up with a name for it yet, but this is what we're going to make. We are using two shank buttons and loops of beads for our clasping on this. Let me show you close up what it looks like. It's just seed beads with Swarovski crystals in between the units. Of course, you can use something other than crystals. You do not have to use crystals. You could use another 80 seed bead even. The process would be the same. It might be a little bit shorter and you may have to adjust your length, but it will work with any type of beads you want to use as your connection in between. Even little rondelles will maybe work. They have to lay together and rondelles kind of flare out. So you might want to use four, four millimeter fire polish beads, something like that, if you do not have enough crystal. So um, let me put this on and I will show you what it looks like on the wrist. And then we will look at our material list. Let's see if I can get coordinated enough to actually do this so you can see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we go. Now, whoops, put that over. Okay, there we go. That's what that looks like on the wrist. I think it's really cute. It lays really nice. The um, clasping is very effective. It doesn't come loose. It doesn't shake off. It's perfectly fine. Works really well. And this is what the entire bracelet looks like. So anyway, let's go ahead and look at our material list for this project. Okay, for this project today, we will be using 11-0 and 8-0 seed beads. Both of these are Toho. This is the nickel plate Toho, and this 8-0 is opaque turquoise. Then... We will be using 4mm bicone crystals. This is a champagne colored Swarovski. And then we'll be using two smaller buttons. Of course, you can use any clasping you like, but I'm going to use these smaller size um, shank buttons. And they're about a half, an, a half an inch in size. I'll measure them to make sure and I'll put it in caption. But um, I'm going to use two of those. You can, of course, use two smaller toggle clasps if you'd like also. And I'll be using a size 10 beading needle and some 8-pound fire line in the smoke color. You can use um, nanofill. You can probably an 8 or 10 pound or a 6 or 8 pound fire line and I'm using it in the smoke. I've been using a lot of smoke lately because I find that it just doesn't show up as much as the clear, especially if I'm using a little bit darker color bead. So um, go ahead and thread onto your needle a wingspan of thread and that's when you spread your arms out side to side, measure from fingertip across one arm, across your chest, across the other arm, and go ahead and thread that onto your needle. You can start with two wingspans if you'd like. I just find that's an awful lot of thread to start with. Just know that you will have to extend your fire line during the process sometime. If you do not know how to extend your fire line, I have a video on GGC's Beginning Beaters. It's labeled video number four, and that will show you how to do that. Go ahead and thread your needle and let's get started. Okay, to start this project, we're going to pick up six 8 seed beads onto our needle, like so, and bring it down to the end of the thread. Leave yourself a long tail, 12 to 14 inches at least, to put on your clasping, or you can just leave enough to extend. And that's what I'm going to do so that you don't have to watch me struggle around a tail. Then come back into the first 8 seed bead that you put on the thread on the tail side and hold onto your tail and your bead and pull these beads into a circle, like so. Now let me get you a little closer so you can see a little better and we'll start this project. So I'm just going to leave enough tail. You can just slide the beads around until you get what you want and I'm just going to leave enough to extend. And then, I'm coming through this 8 seed bead right here. I'm going to pick up an 11 and go into the next 8 seed bead. 
and I'm going to do that all the way around, picking up an 11 0 and going into the next 8 0. So, this is reinforcing my first stitch and um, establishing my second step as I go all the way around. Just make sure that those beads pop down in between the 80 seed beads and tighten up your circle as you're doing so. So just give it a little tug. And then go through the next 80 when you're putting your last one in, go through the next 80 and the next 110 and pull. So now you have a little circle that looks like this. Now we're going to sew down, we're going to leave this tail coming out this way, we're going to sew down to this 11 0 seed bead right here. Actually because this is my first stitch I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around again. I'm going to go through all the 8 0's and all the 11 0's and just really establish some strength here so that my little circle doesn't pull out of shape as I go into my next step. Just get my tail out of the way and I'm just going to sew all the way around. So my tail is coming out of the 11 0 on the very top between the 11 0 and 8 0. I'm going to go over to the third 11 0 seed bead from my tail. So I'm going to count that one 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to exit this 11 0 right here. And this is what you should have. And then I'm going to pick up three 11 0 seed beads onto my needle. I'm coming out of this side of this 11 0. I'm going to go into the opposite side. And then I'm going to sew back through them to establish strength. My first stitch here, I really want to get some strength and some form. So I'm just going to go back through all of these 11 0's. And I put my thumb over it just so that I can make sure I don't pull everything out of whack. It also helps me retain a little tension. And then I'm going to go back into the one I'm coming out of on the circle. And then I will sew through this one and then exit the one that's sticking out. So I'm going to go through this one. and then through this one. And then I'm ready to make my next circle. So I'm going to pick up six 11 0 seed, or excuse me, six 8 0 seed beads onto my needle, like so. I'm coming out of this side of the 11 0, I'll go into the opposite side and pull. I'm going to go into the next 8 0 seed bead and pull my thread through. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to pick up an 11 0 seed bead. I'm going to go into the next 8 0 and pull that 11 0 down between the 8 0's that I just put on my thread. Now you may wonder why I don't just put the 11 0's on and the reason is is that that would just make a larger circle. It won't make this look of beads tucked inside each other. So that's why we do the 11 0's second. It establishes a firm circle and it gives that pretty little tucked in look. Now when you pick up your last 11 0 seed bead as you're moving around, you're going to go into this 8 0, you're going to skip the 11 0, 
that you're attached to and go through the next ADO. And that will ensure that you still have the tucked in look on the very last uh, bead here. So just skip this 11 0, go into this 8 0, and now we can sew around including the 11 0s. So I'm coming out of the 8 0 here. I'm going to go into this 11 0 and 8 0 and 11 0, and I'm going to work myself over to this. 11-0, which is directly opposite from the 11-0 that you attach to. So we're going to go into this 8-0 and exit this 11-0 right here. And then we're going to do the same thing again. We are going to pick up three 11-0 seed beads and go into the opposite side of the 11-0 we're coming out of. And then we're going to sew around this entire unit just to make sure it's strong. One bead at a time. If you take more beads, your unit isn't going to be nice and neat. They kind of squish together. So when you're doing a right angle weave unit like this, I always recommend that you do one bead at a time. It just makes things look better. And now I've sewn all the way around. I'm coming out of this bead here. I'm going to go up into this bead right here so that I can start my next unit with eight O's. And again, we're going to pick up six eight O seed beads onto the needle and come into the opposite side of the 11 O we're coming out of. And pull. I'm going to turn my piece just so I can handle it better. I'm going to go into the first 8 seed bead right next to where my thread is coming out of and begin picking up 11 seed beads and tucking them in between the 8 like so. and just continue all the way around. And then when you get to the last one, just come through the 8 and the 8 on the other side of the 11 you're attached to. Don't go through that 11 and pull. And then again, we will sew around to this 11 0 seed bead. And as we sew around, we will go through both the 8 0s and the 11 0s. So we're going to go through here. And here. And actually, this is our last stitch on this row. So what we're going to do. I've sewed over to where I would start another unit if I was going to start another unit. However, I'm not going to. I have to work down now. This is going to be the width of my bracelet. This will be the length of my bracelet. So I'm going to sew into the next 8 0, the next 11 0, and then into this 8 0 right here. So it will be central on the bottom of this unit. So I want to work through this 8 seed bead right here. And now I'm going to pick up a bicone crystal, an 8 seed bead, and a bicone crystal, like so. And then I am going to go through the opposite side of the 8 I'm coming out of and pull these down and arrange them. And then I am going to turn my piece and I'm going to sew back through this unit I just created. So I'll go through the crystal, the 8 the crystal, and this 8 right here. A 
avoid the 11 O's on either side and then we're going to sew back up into this 8 O and we will start our next unit. Now go up into the 8 O seed bead and this time we're starting with the 8 O seed bead to make our units. So since we have one on here and we're using six beads, we will just pick up five, including this one, we'll have six. So pick up five 8 O seed beads onto your needle, like so, and go into the opposite side you're coming out of and pull. And here we will begin picking up our 11 O's and tucking them between the 8 O's. So we're coming out of this 8 0 we're attached to. <clears throat> Pick up an 11 0, go into the next 8 0 and pull. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then again, 11 0 into the next 8 0. All the way around. And this time you don't have to skip any beads as you go and through your last bead. So you just go directly into the next 8 0 and you can go into the next 11 0 also. And that's our start for our next row. Now we've got to get down to this 11 0 seed bead so that we can make a right angle unit and our next circle. So we're just going to sew all the way down into this bead here. <clears throat> I'm going to turn my unit and just start sewing through both the 8 O's and the 11 O's. This will also reinforce your first unit here and get you to where you need to be. Now I'm going to come out of the very central 11 O. like so. Now I pulled a little hard and pulled that out of place so I'm going to put it back in place there. Now I'm going to pick up three 11 O seed beads. I'm going to come back through the opposite side of this 11 O right here and pull. I'm going to reinforce this unit by sewing through it again. It also gives it a better shape if you sew all the way around it. You can just sew up to this bead and start your next unit, but I don't really recommend that because your piece isn't going to lay as nice. Sewing through again and reinforcing things really makes your piece strong and neat. Okay, so now I'm coming out of this 11 O seed bead right here. I'm going to pick up six of my um, 8 O seed beads because I don't have an 8 O to work through this time. So instead of picking up five, I will pick up six like I did originally. So I've got six. I'm coming out of this side. I'm going to go into the opposite side of the 11 O <clears throat> and pull my beads into a circle. And then I'm going to go up through the next 8 O seed bead right here. I'm going to zoom in just a little more just to make sure that everything's nice and clear and pull through that 8 O. And I'm going to begin picking up my 6 O's and going through, or not 6 O's, 11 O's. Don't ask me where that came from. I don't even know. <clears throat> my mouth just says whatever it wants, I think. Then we're going to go into the next 8 0. And again, all the way into the next 8 0. All the way around. And 
And again, when you pick up your last 11 ohm, pull it into the 8 ohm seed beads, and then skip the 11 ohm you're attached to, and we're going to sew all the way around up into this 8 ohm so that we can make our crystal attachment. So now we're going to go all the way around. Skip that 11 ohm. You can go into the 11 ohm after that 8 ohm that you're going into. That's fine because we're going to sew all the way around anyway. So come all the way around. Now we're going to go into the 8 ohm directly across from the first unit that we are the first row that we made. So this 8 ohm right here is where we're going to work and we're going to work into this 8 ohm. So go into the 8 ohm right here. Pull. And now we don't have to pick up any 8 ohms because we've got them both here. All we have to do is pick up our crystals. So we're going to pick up a crystal and we're going to go directly across into the bead that aligns with the bead we're coming out of. Right here. And pull that down. And then pick up another crystal. Like so. And you're coming out of this 8 ohm. you're going to go directly into this 8 ohm, avoiding the 11 ohs on either side. And pull your thread through. Now, sew back through this entire joint you just made. So I'm going to go back into the crystal. I'm going to go back into the 8 ohm here. And then I'm going to go back into this crystal. And we'll go into the 8 ohm and the 11 ohm after it. And because we need to get over here, we have to sew all the way around this unit until we get to the 11 ohm that aligns with the 11 ohm that we originally attached to. So you want to get all the way over here. So let's sew into this 8 ohm here and the 11 ohm. So basically you just sew to where you need to be to make your next unit. And do it gently because you don't want to push your beads all out of shape. And they are tight because of the stitch, the way we're putting them together. They're a little tight, but and they're laying at funny angles, but they're, they're not hard to navigate. You can get through them. Then we're going to go through this 11 0 here directly across from the, where we originally attached on this unit. So just make sure you're lined up in the proper bead and then pick up three 11 0 seed beads and go into the opposite side of the 11 0 you're coming out of. Whoops, I didn't get three, I only got two beads. Hang on, let me see if I can back myself out of here. I might not be able to. I have to take my needle off. Okay, so I'm going to correct this really quickly. I'm just going to take this off and pull my thread out and re-thread my needle so that I can pick up the proper amount of beads since I didn't. And my fingernails are a little longer than I usually get them done and so it's taking me a little longer. There we go. Now, I'm going to pick up one more 11 0 so that I have three all together on here and then I'm going to go into the opposite side here. And then reinforce by sewing through the unit. And once I've sewn all the way through, 
I'll sew back up to the top bead that I need to make my next unit in. So I sew here and then into this one here. Now I will pick up six of my 80 seed beads again. Oops, I just flipped that one across the room. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six, and then I seem to be pushing everything out of shape here. There we go. Now I've got my six. I'm going to go into the opposite side that I'm coming out of and pull. And again, we'll do the 11 O's. So come through the next eight O. Pick up an 11 0. Go all the way around. Come up through pick up your last one, come up through the 8 -0, skip that 11 -0, and go into the 8 -0 after it, pull that 11 -0 in, and this is what you have. Now we have to join these two units together. So we're going to sew all the way around and come out of this 8 -0 seed bead here. So I'm coming out of this 11 -0. I'm just going to continue sewing until I get into the 8O directly across from the 8O I want to connect to. So right here, just line them up, look at them, make sure that you're coming out of the right one. It's pretty easy to determine. It's pretty obvious. Get through that 8O. And now I will pick up a crystal and go through the opposite 8 on the same side. So I'm coming out of this side, I'm going to go through this side. Oops, I better back off just a little because I seem to be moving out of frame. Let's go here. And like I said before, those little 11 O's are at a funny angle. So just take your time and make your way through. They're not hard to go through, they just are a little blocked by the angle, so you just have to maneuver around it. And then pick up another crystal and go through the opposite side of the 8 you started, or you're attaching to on the opposite row. And then reinforce the unit you just made. So go through the crystal here. Go through the 8 here, the crystal here, and the 8 here. Now, this is where our tail is, so we know that's the end of our piece where we're going to put our clasping. So we need to work over to this bead here to start our next row. And so now we're going to go into the 11 8 and when we start the next row here, we have to start in an 8 seed bead because we're working out this way and then we'll work this way. So when you're starting out um, at the very end of the row here, you're going to be going through the 8 seed bead. So now, We will do just like we did when we started this one. We will go through this 8 here. And we're going to make a unit with the crystals. So we're going to pick up a crystal, an 8 and a crystal. 
and we'll go into the opposite side of the 8 we're coming out of and pull. Then we'll reinforce by going through all of these beads again. So through the crystal, the 8 the crystal, back into the 8 and then we will work into the 8 So back into the crystal, and into this 8 -o. And this is the unit where we will start with five 8 seed beads because we have our sixth already on our piece. So pick up five of your 8 seed beads. One, two, three, four, five. And then go into the opposite side of the 8 right here. And then I'm going to turn my piece a little bit and start with my 11 O's, tucking them between the 8 O's. So I will just go through the next 8 O seed bead here, pull, and continue working my way around. And here you don't have to worry about skipping an 11 -0. Just go through the 8 you've attached to and then go up into the 11 -0, and then sew over to the 11 central here so that it lines up perfectly with your previous row. So we're going to go into this 8 -0. and into the 11 -0 beneath it, right there. Oops. And here, we'll begin working sideways. So we'll pick up three 11 -0 seed beads, reinforce the unit, And then work over to the top bead and begin our next unit here. And here we have to pick up six 8 -o seed beads. So I've got six, and now I'm going to go into the opposite side, pull, and begin putting my 11 O seed beads in. So I need to go through this 8 O here. It's pretty repetitious from this point. You just have to remember um, to put in your crystals. You'll have to sew around until you get to the crystal part, move to your next one. And then just remember as you come back around, you have to go through the 8 0 and make your crystal unit first and then start making your row. So basically, you have to think a little bit about it, but not too bad. You can just look at it and see where you need to go next and continue going down until you make the length make three um, units wide, make the length that you want for your bracelet, and that's all there is to it. So now I'm putting in my last bead, 
I am going to skip that 11 out, go through the two 8 here. Let me back off just a little because I am just all over the place today. My bead mat is sliding all different directions. What's up with that? Okay. So now I'm going to go into this 11 0 seed bead here, tighten, and then I have to work into this 8 0 and work my crystals up into this 8 0. So I will go into the 8 0 here. and pick up a crystal, go into the 8 in the unit above, that lines up with the 8 you're coming out of, go through the same side you're coming out of, like so, pick up a crystal, go into the opposite side that you started in, like so, and it is kind of far away, I don't know. I don't know where I want to be today, like so. Reinforce the unit. And this moves pretty quick. It's pretty easy. Turns out really cute. And it's a nice you know, inexpensive one because you don't have to use Swarovski crystals. You could use a little tiny rondelle or you could use, um, you could probably get away with a the pearl. They're a little round, but if you needed to, you could always add a little 11 0 seed bead on these units in between and give it a little different look. But you can do this Basically, you could do more 80 seed beads on either side too. You don't even have to use a bicone. You could even use 60 seed beads in between. It doesn't have to be the way I'm doing it. It's a pretty basic, easy stitch to do, so you can do it any way you want. Now, I've reinforced that crystal unit. I'm going to sew down into this 110 here, right here. and make my unit of right angle weave that attaches the two right through this 11 0 and then I will sew around this and make my last unit sew until I get to the bottom of it the 8 0 seed bead add my unit of crystal and my 8 0 work from it making my next row and it's just totally repetitious from this point on so if you need to just back up the video and see how you start the next row but it's really very simple we're just going to continue making these units until we are about an inch short of the length we want I am shooting for um, about a seven and a half inch bracelet. So go ahead and make your units until you have 13 rows. So this, as it is right now, measures exactly six inches. I'm hoping to gain an inch and a half in my clasping. So this is what we're going to do. I've made my last row. I've sewed around till I'm coming out of this 8 seed bead just like I would if I was going to make my next row by adding crystals. However, I am not going to add crystals to this one. I am going to pick up two 11 seed beads and an 8 and then I'm going to go through my button. Like so. Now I'm going to go back through the 8 seed bead here and pull this down until the top of my button rests right on the shank of it, rests right on top of that 8 seed bead. And then I'm going to pick up two more 11 seed beads and I'm going to go through the opposite side of the 8 I started in. So I'm coming out on this side. I'm going to go into this side. And then I'm going to sew around this entire unit. 
So I'm going into the 80 and the 110 here. And just because I want to secure this, I don't want a lot of stress just on that 80 seed bead, I'm going to sew around this entire unit so that I have it my um, clasping anchored much better than just having it on that 80 seed bead, which would probably just pull out of place. So I'm going to sew around the whole thing. And then I will sew back up through the original 80 seed bead I started in. Like so. And exit that 80. And then I will sew back up through the 11 O's and the 80 and the button. So now let me turn this so I can actually get to it a little better. I'm going to go into these two 11 O's here under the button and the 8 O. Through the button shank, back through the 8 O, and then down into the two 11 O's on this side. And back into the 8 O. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew up through this again and then I'll sew around the entire unit again. So I'm going to go back into the 11 O's. So I've gone through the 8 O that I originally started in, go back through the two 11 O's and the 8 O and the button and then I will sew back down into the 80 the two 11 O's on this side and then back into this 80 and the 11 0 behind it. And then I'm going to sew down into this 8 0. Now you can go ahead and sew around the entire unit if you'd like, but we have to sew all the way over to get to the this unit over here to put the other button on. So I am going to just do that because that should give enough strength since I'm not just going <clears throat> Since I'm not just ending it here, I'm going to go through this 11 0 here. So I've come down through this one, I'm going to go through this one, and then I'm going to go up into the next unit. And so through the top of this unit here, and these beads are like I said earlier, at a funny angle, so it takes a little bit to get through them just because of the angles. They're not full of thread. They're just laying at angles the way that the 11 O's are tucked in there that makes you have to work a little bit sometimes. So now I'm going through this unit of 11 O's here. So I've come through this 11 O, I'm going through this 11 O, I'm going to come up through this 11 O and the 8 O behind it. And then I'm going to go into this 11 0 and this 8 0. And again, I will put my button on exactly the way that I put this one on. So two 11 0s. An 8 0. And my button. I go through my button. Drop it down back through the 8 0 
and then two more 11 O's. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. So I'm doing exactly what I did on the other side. If I was out of frame, just know that it's exactly the same process. So now I'm coming back through the other side of the 8 0 I will sew around this entire unit, come back through, go through my attachment again, go through it one more time after that, and then I will sew through my unit, and um, we'll be back to tie this end off. Okay, so I have secured my button. I'm coming out of these 11 0 seed beads here. I'm going to go back into the 8 0 that I'm attaching to and the 11 0 behind it. And then I am going to sew around the unit. So I'm going to go back into a few of these beads here. But before I sew all the way around, right here between this 11 0 and this 8 0, I'm going to bring my thread around in a loop and draw, go through the loop with my needle and draw the thread down into a knot on the thread between the 11 0 and the 8 0 here. And then I'm going to sew down. I will go into this 8 0 here that the crystals are attached to in the next row, just the 8 0. And I'll sew down into the crystals, or one crystal actually, into the 8 0 that it's attached to, and the 11 0 behind it. And I'll sew around this entire unit. But before I do that, I'm going to tie one more knot once I get up here between the 11 0 and the 8 0. So I've gone through this 8 0, this 11 0. I will bring my thread around in a loop. Make sure that as I go through the loop with my needle and pull my knot, that it pulls down between those two beads and does not go on top of any of my beads like it just did. So I'll just push it back in there before I draw it tightly into a knot and pull it into a knot and then sew around a few more beads. So I'll go down here and through here and then I will cut off my thread. I'll leave a tiny tag I'll burn that tag down with my lighter or my thread zapper, it doesn't matter. Just burn it down, melt it in, and that's your clasping side with your buttons. Now, we're going to make some loops on the other side to go around these buttons for our closure. However, if you did not leave a long tail, like I did not, at this point you will have to extend your thread or get rid of it and tie another thread on so that you can begin. If you do tie another knot on, you'll tie in between your beads, sew around an entire unit, sew through this unit, go all the way over to this one, and then start your clasping if you're going to tie on. If you're going to extend your fire line like I am, then just go ahead and do that. If you don't know how, watch video number four, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, and learn how to extend your fire line. And then we will come back and do this last piece. Of course, if you have left a long tail, then you can just go ahead and follow the next steps. Okay, so I have extended my fire line, and I am ready to start my loops that will go around my clasping on this side of the bracelet. So I'm coming out of, well actually in between this 8 and 11 So that's right where it kind of, man, no, I'm coming out of the 8 So make sure you're coming out of the 8 seed bead because this is our tail thread, so it's just where we left it. And then pick up an 11 seed bead and then pick up an 8 0 seed bead, and then we will begin to pick up a series of 11 0 seed beads big enough to go around our button. Now, it won't be an exact amount because we will all be using different kinds of buttons. So, what I will do is I will pick up a series 
and then I will, um, once I think I have enough, I will test it around my button, and I will show you how to do that. So go ahead and pick up a series of 11 O's, and I'll be back in a moment when I think I have enough to test my Okay, loop. so I have picked up about 28 seed beads. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my needle through this 8 O seed bead right here, and I'm going to pull these into a loop. And then I'm going to wrap this around my finger so it's pretty tight and it's not going to slip and I can get an accurate measurement around my button. So here I am with my loop. I'm going to bring my button around and I'm going to slide it through and make sure it fits pretty well. And it does. And I can actually take a few of these seed beads off. So I think I'll take about four of them off and try that again. Once I get the proper number, then I'll show you how to secure this. But go ahead and test your beads. Make sure that it goes over your button fairly easily. Um, if it's a little too big, then adjust that down as needed, and we'll be back. I'm going to take just a few of mine off just to see how it fits. I'll try it again. and Once I have established how much I think I should have on there, then I will be back. Okay, so I have established that I want to use 26 beads. Now, just make sure that you know how many you're putting on this one before you loop it all around, because it's easier to count when it's in a straight line. And then we will secure this, and we'll do the same thing on this side. But you want the same amount of beads, so make sure you know how many you are using. Now, I'm going to come back through this 8 seed bead and draw these into a loop, like so. And then I'm going to pick up one 11 O seed bead. And I'm going to go back into the 8 O seed bead that I am connecting to. And just the 8 O, trying to avoid the 11 O on the other side of it. And I'm going to pull my thread through. And that's what that should look like. Now I'm going to sew back up all the way around all these beads back down through around my unit once and then one more time up through the loop. And once we've done that, we'll be back. Okay, as you can see, I have secured my loop here. Now I want to make sure it's not all bunched or weird. You want to make sure as you sew through it, when you're securing it, that you don't skip any of your beads as you go through or you'll have a funny looking lumpy loop not to mention you'll be able to see thread. So now I have sewn after I came out, I sewed all the way around until I'm coming out of this 11 O seed bead. So I secured, went through my 8 O, I came out of this side, went through my 8 O and sewed all the way around. So all you want to do is sew until you come to this unit here, this little unit of 11 O seed beads, and then we're going to sew through it and into the next unit of our bracelet so that we can move over to the outside unit and do the same thing we just did. I'm having a problem getting through here so let me pull on that with my flat nose pliers and I'll just keep working through my beads until I get over to the Sado seed bead. Of course, it just tangled on my flat nose pliers. Let me get them out of the way. Anything I leave on my desk is going to be tangled for my thread. Okay, so now I'm coming out of this 11 O seed bead here. I'm going to go into this one here and sew all the way up around. So I'll go into here. And like I said before, the angles of these beads make it a little bit difficult to navigate, so I'm just going to do one at a time. If you want to, you can sew through just the 8 O's on the inside here. Oh, 
but it's better just to make sure you're not going to show any thread if you can go through the 11 O's too. Okay. Get up into this 8 right here. And I will do the same thing I did on this side. So I will pick up an 11 0, an 8 0, drop it down, and now I will pick up my 26 beads since I measured and counted and that's how many I want. I will pick them up, I will sew through them, secure them, and then sew through the units just like I showed you on the other side and tie off my thread. We'll be back to see the finished product. Okay, so I went ahead and finished my loop and secured it and tied it off and this is what it looks like when you put the bracelet on. This is the clasping we just made. It's really cute. It's very effective, works very well. These buttons are kind of awkward but once you get them on they stay on there pretty nicely and it might just be because they use square buttons that they're a little awkward but they're working really well. So this design is a solid design. Let me take this off I may have to do this off camera simply because, eh, maybe not. Maybe I can do it. And I'll show you what the entire bracelet looks like. Hmm. Okay, come on, you. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> that is what the finished bracelet looks like. I think it's really cute. It would be really cute in all different kinds of color combinations. It's just adorable. Let me back off a little bit here. And this turned out, let me measure it for you. It turned out to be right at seven and a half inches, which is exactly what I wanted. So now that you know how it'll measure out, you can measure, you can adjust it to measure when it's finished the length that you want for your particular wrist or if you're making it for someone their wrist. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you next time. Bye-bye.